Hello there, Mediocre Painter here, and I'm doing YouTube videos to help you get into the wargaming hobby. Because I've been painting miniatures for some 32 odd years, and I've made the mistakes, so you don't have to. So today I'm going to be talking about my painting guide for the Fast Riders from Shades by Night Vault. And I have to be the first to admit here that Stormcast are not my favourite miniatures to paint. There's lots of reasons for that, one of which I think that Stormcast are a bit of a commercial exploit by Games Workshop to essentially introduce marine-like models to the fantasy realm. However, I can't deny the fact that the miniatures that they've done are really excellent in terms of their actual sculpts. They're top-notch, but I've never been a fan of painting marines because of all that edge highlighting that's going on. And so Stormcast are kind of uh, the same sort of thing. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really like painting them. However, these Fast Riders, I didn't exactly enjoy painting, but I am really quite pleased with how they turned out. So let me talk about assembly of these guys. Like a lot of the Stormcast models, you basically have a head and then two parts that you basically sandwich the head on in order to be able to keep that model in place. So assembly is frankly a bit of a pain and fiddly and fiddly because the head's going to go everywhere and such and things like that. I don't think I have ever assembled a Stormcaster's push to fit where I didn't need to use a little bit of green stuff in order to be able to um, hide the join on one of the pauldrons or another. And that's no different to these models. These models basically suffer from that as well. So are they really sort of easy to build? No. Are they the worst? No, I don't think they're the worst but they're certainly um, worse than average. So I'd certainly probably give them a two out of five from an assembly perspective. Now, if you're interested in some tips about how you actually go about assembling push fit to fit minis, I did a video about that and it's up here. So this painting guide is designed really for to, with the beginner in mind, though I have to admit on these models, I did stray a little bit from beginner techniques on Sanson Fast Rider, I actually did a little bit of blending on the hook. And I just couldn't resist myself from doing that because I wanted it to look like a phoenix. There you go. So let's start with um, my first model that I actually had a go on because I wasn't sure how I was going to paint these, and that was Elias Swift Blade. So I had a look online in terms of some inspiration for Stormcast Eternals and I'm not a massive fan of like the whole gold sort of sangu sanguineous sort of look or Dante kind of look going on. So I decided that I would do them in a metallic purple and the purple is um, amethyst purple from Coat of Arms and then used a, a purple wash in order to basically get into all the nooks and crannies and crevices. I then decided to do like a copper for the flowy bits for between the legs with an Agrax wash and then highlighted back up with the copper again. And uh, wherever I saw the sort of lightning bolts, I decided to pick that out with a bright silver like uh, a mithril silver. In terms of the weapon itself, I used um, a an antique gold, which is not a Games Workshop gold, it's a, a Vallejo gold with an Agrax and then try, tried to do the base part and the edges with um, the purple to try and keep it all in keeping. And in terms of the actual uh, face of the, of the guy himself, I used a gold with an Agrax to try and to tone it back. With respect to the pauldrons, then basically I used a copper on the trim with an agrax, a gold as the background, and then basically a mithril to actually highlight, you know, the hammer and um, and such on it. 
in terms of the actual flowy bits that's coming out of his um, of his helmet I'm not really sure what you call that to be honest I used a white and then just a simple um, sepia wash on the sword I basically used like a, a dull sort of silver like a bolt gun and, and then basically did a thin wash um, with Agrax on it the interesting thing about these models, they have really cool bases. All the models in the Shades by series have really cool bases, to be honest. And so here, basically, I used a, a Mordeval type brown on the actual wood and the roots, and then used a, an Agrax wash, and then I highlighted back up with the same brown. I didn't use a dry brush, I actually highlighted it back up. In terms of the leaves that fell on the ground, I used a goblin green with a little green wash and then highlighted back up with the goblin and then the base is basically a sort of dark grey with a white dry brush highlight in spots just to pick out the, the tips of the rocks and things like that and I followed that kind of technique across all of the, these three models. I guess um, the interesting thing on this is um, the fur on the back I wasn't really sure exactly how I was going to do this, to be perfectly honest with you. So what I did was I used um, an Avalon's Sunset, followed by a thinned down, very thin down, um, <clears throat> black wash with a little bit of brown. And then I highlighted up in a, a white, very lightly as a white dry brush. And then I took a sunburst yellow to it and just went over that again with a dry brush to pick out the white elements. And I'm quite pleased with the way that kind of turned out. That looks pretty good. It's not too flashy. I kind of like it. I kept it simple on the inside of the cloak. I just decided to do it gold with an Agrax. I couldn't be bothered to you know, pick out the, the supreme details on that, to be perfectly honest with you. So that's basically how I did uh, Elias, and I followed basically the same principles when I did the old Eagle Eye. Um, there's nothing really all that different on this guy, to be perfectly honest. I did have a little bit of a time actually deciding how I was going to do his axe. So... I was like, oh, do I do this gold, silver, do I purple? And I played around with it um, quite a bit until I got something I liked the look of. And it turned out that the purple and the gold um, looked the best. So, you know, there is a reason why um, Louisiana State University use uh, purple and gold together. Is they do actually go really well together in terms of being very striking and um, that seemed to be in keeping with everything else. I found that using too much silver on these models didn't really work, and it was best to use those flashes of silver for the bits that um, highlight them as stormcast. So now we come on to Samson. So again, I followed the same principles as I did with all the others. Um, I did do a couple of things here that were perhaps a little clever. So, in terms of the globe that he has um, uh, on his belt, I used a white and then I used a very thin um, blue wash and then I used a very thin watered down um, blue, light blue paint, like a, an aqua blue paint in order to fill in the crevices and it actually worked out really quite well. I'm quite pleased how that, that kind of turned out. Often when you thin down paints to get a kind of a wash effect with stuff, it doesn't really work. It's too muddy, but I didn't really have anything else that um, I thought would work, and it did actually pull off pretty good. In terms of the, the stone at his feet, I decided that that would be like a quartz, and so I used um, a quartz and then like a white and then like a grey wash on that, and I'm really pleased with the way that kind of came out. On... Um, Previous models I've done where I'm trying to look for a quartz effect, I've used a silver um, wash from Instar Paints, and I did that here as well. You can't really see it in the pictures, but if you look at this under the light and move it around, the stone does kind of twinkle a little bit, which I really, really like. So the real sort of uh, 
somewhat fancy thing I did here was I actually did use some blending on the bird. So blending is a more advanced technique but um, what I call fire blending is actually probably the easiest way to learn blending because um, the graduation um, is quite clear to you because you understand how it actually works because you go from a red to an orange to a yellow and literally the way you do this is you you start with your base yellow which in this case i use an abalone sunset which is like a more like an ochre than a yellow so i started with that and that's how i got the color for the tip of the head basically and then i used a, a blood red um for the end tail feathers and then a blazing orange in the middle in between and the trick is really is keeping the paint wet and then just gradually mixing it in so you paint the red at the bottom in the blood and then you start on the blazing orange and this model is really good to sort of teach you about blending because because of the different feather lines it can really help you to delineate where you're supposed to apply the different colors so basically in the sort of first two feather rungs I used the, blade, um, the blood red and then I start then I on the next two I used a blazing orange and then the next I had the avalanche and then just I blended it together with a, a wet brush going from the top so going from the bottom to the top um, to blend in the red and the orange and then subsequently yellow and then once that's kind of done I then reapply the yellow at the top and come back down again I'm really pleased with the transition and the way that kind of worked um, it really did work well I then used a caribou crimson um, wash which is like a sort of a dark red wash um, and I thinned it down when I got above the lower two feather streams so that it wouldn't dominate so much as you got up and then I did a very very light dry brush in a little white just on the feathers just to pick it out a little bit um, so that um, it really stood out a, a little more I really had a lot of fun painting um, painting that and I actually this did this guy didn't feel too much like a chore and I really thought that um, these stone casts were going to feel a bit like a chore because I'm, I just can't get into them. But I actually really did enjoy painting these fast riders. Uh, I was quite pleased with the way that they turned out. I kept it simple, except when I got to that bird and I just couldn't help myself. I actually did do a little bit of blending there. But I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. So hopefully you found that uh, useful. Um, if you did, then please like, please subscribe. I will be doing more and I'll see you next time.